Today I'm asking one of my favorite guitar luthiers, guitar makers, about his vision, about his brand. Porrid Smith is in the house. So Chris, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for, for joining us. It was quite a surprise. We got the call two days ago that you're coming over. Yeah, I've been traveling a lot. I was in Japan a few days ago, oh, France, wow. Italy, the UK, Germany. So last night they told me that we were going to do a video. Yeah. So it's just as much a surprise to me <laughs> okay. as to you. Well, then it's, it's and, fair at least. Well, that's yeah, that's fair. So. Um, You've got a big ass pedal board. In front oh yeah! Of you, don't and I've don't got tell a really me about it. Small one with the new pedals. <laughs> I'm more excited about those three because I I never played those, but today I'm gonna I'm gonna experience well, I, them. I can I can teach you what they do. I Please, can, we can switch guitars and I'll show you what they do. Oh, that would be an absolute um, honor. Absolute look, honor. We've never been in the pedal business, but the problem with pedals is you buy a hundred of them and only. Six, eight, ten make the pedal board. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. So they come and go, yeah. which you were yeah. talking yes. about before we started the video. These were intended to make the pedal board and stay, stay on the pedal okay. board. Okay. So um, <laughs> I, I, I like uh, good guitar sounds. I normally just plug straight into my amp. I never, I never use pedals. The okay. only pedal I use is a tuner pedal. Oh, but yeah. in the studio, when you're trying to get an expansive sound left and right for the vocal to be in the middle, you very often need a pedal. Yeah. So yeah. I started using them in the studio, and they're just good fun when they're right. I mean, I, I wanted to ask this actually. Sorry to interrupt. Go, no, go. Um, what what excites you nowadays? Because you've been in the business for, since the mid '80s, right? You you founded uh, PRS. Was, was it '85? Yeah. Five. Yeah. It was the company started? Yeah. I was making guitars before. Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. What excites you nowadays? Tonally or in terms of guitar? Same things that always have. Really good guitar players, really musical tones, really musical playing. Uh, watching Joe Walsh play his PRS at Taylor Hawkins was exciting. Oh, yes. Um, you, you're still an active musician, right? You yeah. have a band? You yeah, play I had my gigs? hand operated on about seven, six, seven months ago, and it's just starting to heal. You were hearing me play for the first time in a year. Oh, really? Um, well, such an honor to, it, well, to share this moment. It's, then. it's not bending very well, okay. um, but it's coming along. Uh, it's slowly coming along. It's great to um, hear. It was a piece of bone that had grown on my tendon, and every time I moved my finger, it was tearing the muscle up, and they had to go in and remove it. But they didn't know it was there. They saw something on the MRI, but they weren't sure. And they opened it up, and there it is. OK. It's a pleasure to be here. I, I heard so many stories last night. Um, this business is healthy. Um, this business is growing. Our business is growing. Uh, we're doing a $100 million worth of guitars. There's 450 people making guitars in Maryland. And there's another set of people almost that size making them. Um, Overseas. Yeah. yeah. So one would assume it's a we're much making a hundred a day company. in Maryland and five hundred a day in the other factories. Look, this guitar you're holding, when we released it, we got thirteen thousand <laughs> orders in one day. Come it's a different time. On. It's a different time for our company. It used wow. to be box by box, but this is pallet by pallet. Yeah, There's yeah, a lot of guitars. Yeah, yeah. And when I was in Japan last week, this was the number one guitar that they were coming into stores asking for. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it sounded beautiful when you were just playing. Play a chord for everybody so they can this hear is, what this I, sounds like. I might turn off the delay for the beginning, just, uh, just a clean guitar tone. It's, I, I do understand why it was such a hype around this guitar and why it keeps on selling that much, because, because of all the good reasons. We, we made a video on it. We'll link it uh, below. It's, it's that good. <laughs> I turn it the way back on. Well, 
well, that's really nice sustain for something in that price point. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Then we, then we did our job. Yeah, absolutely, and and that's also something I wanted to ask because um, you've been making guitars and PRS was big even before you started the SE line, uh, making more affordable mm -hmm. guitars. Mm -hmm. How come you waited so long with making guitars overseas and what made you change We've your mind? We've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, it's not, just, now it's, yeah. It's just now it's growing exponentially. Um, the person who is in charge of it is a remarkable manager and he's a remarkable uh, guitar maker. And so when you have a really good manager and a guitar maker, getting things to happen, things happen. And um, we're doing about $50 million a year in these SE guitars. Um, that's wholesale for us, you know. Wow. And wow. Um, when John Mayer heard those pickups that we did for him, he was like, done. Okay, in the SE? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. It could, because it, <laughs> so, it sounds like a really yeah. good old guitar. Yeah. I know. Um, mm. So... There's a there's a trick that we did in him to get him to sound old, and it worked like a charm. Wow! Now he was very 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 picky about everything on the guitar, but when he heard the pickups, he's done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we have that guitar right there, the the American made, the Maryland made. Yeah. Uh, Silver Sky is in our studio since it came out, pretty much, yeah. and it's it's our choice of uh, three single guitar. But the SE shocked us pretty much because it's so close. That's more of a general question, like. I remember, I, I grew up with PRS guitars, and I remember them always being um, a, a touch on the modern side, especially compared to the, the, the big ones, the big F, the big G. And now, if you look at it, uh, the range, the model range, there is everything in there. Mm -hmm. in there. And what's definitely new compared to like 2000s is um, the, the more traditional options and models, the mm -hmm. 594s. Yeah. Um, these guys, all these. Was this something that you were gravitating towards to like open up in this Whoa. direction? Or was this more like well, the, the Silver Sky I was friends. gravitating toward making John happy? Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a clear said, I, I, I grew up playing this guitar and I want, <laughs> yeah. and we retooled the whole thing. What welled me up when we finally yeah. got it was I put my hand around the neck and it yeah. was a 63 neck shape. And I was like, oh, that hasn't been tooled up in decades, yeah. right? Yeah. I love that. Um, Let's use this guitar for example. Yeah. I've never played this guitar before, but I knew how the nut was cut. I knew how yeah. uh, the tuning pegs were made. I knew how the frets were put in. I knew what the scale length was. I knew how we set it up. I knew how this all operated. And so I was comfortable picking it up. The next shape, obviously I wasn't having any trouble playing the guitar. Um, for me, that's important because if you're a Toman customer, you're gonna get a box in the mail yeah. and you don't know. You you want to trust it, yeah. but the, if if it's doing everything you want it to do when you get it, it's not. You're not gonna. They're not. They're not gonna rip it. Yeah. Rip it out of your dead hands, yeah. right? Yeah. But this is a really nice guitar. I mean, it's pretty enough. Oh yes, it's pretty enough. It's uh, yeah. why did why, why didn't you sell this? Why is it here? Why is it a, I, I the, I, I why is it a demonstration it. guitar? <laughs> the guys are on it. I'm pretty sure it's in our custom shop department. Look. I just grabbed it because, <laughs> because of obvious reasons. I wanted to have something. First of all, maple neck, maple boards is not something we see very often. And also, I just strummed the strings like it was on the wall. I was like, okay. The I, guitar's ringing. I, well. I want this, yeah. Oh. <laughs> all right. Yeah, beautiful guitar. So for me... Um, a so 594 I've... was a guitar that was had a toggle up here with four knobs, and people learn how to play that way. They don't really want to change. Okay. You, know? so you wanted to open up in that direction for people who appreciate the traditional vibes. If you're a race car driver and you learned how to race with a paddle shifter, you want a paddle shifter. If you learn four on the floor or five on the yeah. floor, you want to do that. If you learn with yeah. an automatic, you want to do that. Same thing with guitar players. They learned how to play a certain yeah. way. Yeah. I see some pedals on the floor, which yes. was an even bigger surprise for me that you, you bring the pedals. Uh, tell me about those. Well, we released them just, what, a couple days ago? A couple ago, days ago, right? yeah. yeah. Um, there's three of them, Went Through the Trees, Horse Meat, and Merry Cries. So let me turn each one off and go through them with you. Went Through the Trees is two flangers fighting each other, okay? Imagine two Leslies in the room, okay. and they're going different speeds, okay? So um, if one, one of them would be this speed, so 
that's one speed, okay? And then the other one is a much, I've got to sit much faster. And if you put both of them on at the same time, Then there's regeneration, which is the normal flanger sound. That's tail and mouth. Oh, turn that it back does in. have some Leslie flavors. And then you can turn the high end up. Now, on most flangers, you can't control how much high end they add because when you flange things, it cancels high end, and so they add it back in, but you don't have control over it. Yeah. And this one, you have complete control over, over that. And wow. then you can do it dry and wet. So this would be dry. And this would be completely wet. So. So that's when through the trees. Okay. The next one's Mary Cries. Mary Cries is an LA two A in a pedal. It's oh. a it's a compressor. <laughs> that's on and this is off. On. That's exactly the same, but as if you've got an LA-2A yeah. on. And we put the light on the pedal to see how much it was compressing. Yeah. Because you couldn't tell. Yeah, yeah. So we, we put it on so people had a feedback loop between their eyes and that. Now, then horse meat, I got my hands on an old clon. Okay. And I didn't understand what the big deal was. I took it upstairs and I plugged it in. Wow, oh, that's what the big deal is, a real okay. one, you know. And did you like was, it? Did you understand then why? I understood it. There was lots of things about it that I could, it was, it was mid-rangey. Yes. Um, <laughs> when you turn the gain up, the bass went down. Um, was a lot of things about it. So I wanted to get control over it and I didn't want anything to do with that circuit. So we started a circuit from scratch where you could control the high mid range, okay. you could control the treble, you could control the bass, and you could obviously control the output and the gain, but I wanted to have a throaty sound like an old Marshall. Okay. And It sounds like no. if you turn that no, up. up. Yeah, yeah, right. We named it horse meat. It was a joke. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it ate clon centaurs for breakfast. That was the joke. Yeah. But the reason I liked it was because it was usable. Now, nobody in their right minds would release two flangers in one box, <laughs> a new distortion pedal, because everybody's got one, and a compressor nobody wants. <laughs> but it worked. So, you know, I mean, you know, I, I, look. The thing about this, the clon, I just was in, in Japan. They wanted, I found one for sale and I got a deal on it. That okay. They wanted $7,000 for the battle. And that's cheap. I mean, it's a, it's a holy grail. If you had a clon at home, you, yeah. you have a real one at home? No. Have you ever played to a real one? Nope. Well, now, there you go. And it's not the same circuit. But yeah. okay, that's, that's the part I liked about yeah. it. You stepped on it and it was music. Yeah. Yeah. There were parts about it I couldn't control. I couldn't control the bass. I couldn't control how much high mid-range it added. I couldn't. I could control some of the treble, yeah, but yeah. the separate bass I couldn't control. And I wanted it to sound throatier yeah. without the mid-range being added. I also see something right. exceptionally right. interesting. All right, so, you know, we got to open Hendrix's amp that he used at Woodstock, and we've been selling 50s and 100s. And yeah. people don't really want, 
want to sound like Hendrix, they want to sound like themselves, but the thing about the amp is you can sound like yourself with one. That's the 20 watt version. And it sounds good, I like it. Uh, did, you, did you change a lot about the, the power amp or just scaled it down to give you that Same flavor? Same exact power amp, oh, just wow. lower, lower wattage tubes. Ex why, I can't, if, wow. I mean, his signature's on the back of that amplifier. Yeah. I, I can't change the circuit. Yeah. It's what he used. When we opened the amp, they had done so many things to keep it from blowing power tubes because he did, they didn't want him to blow on the road. They'd lower the voltages of the power stage. They'd done this, they'd done that, they'd done oh, th this. That was all in his original? Oh, amp. God, yes. Oh, wow, okay. It didn't, didn't have the, it didn't have the original power transformer in it. Wow. What was cool about the amp was that the bass pickup sounded like a treble pickup. That's the bass pickup. So. All the clarity. clarity. Bass pickup sounding like a treble pickup. And I was watching videos of him, and he's playing on the bass pickup. Why not? Crazy. Do you mind if I plug in or grab that no, guitar? No, you can come you... sit here. I'll, let's change okay. sheets. Okay. Sound like brothers in arms. So it's the good. same chords, I think, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh wow! I was, good. That's the guitar sounded good in your hands. Did I, you turn horse meat on? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, Halfway good. in, and I totally forgot about the third pedal because I was enjoying myself too much. <laughs> All right, so the only thing you had on was horse meat. Yeah, yeah. At the beginning, I had a little bit of the merry cries, and then I turned that off and turned on. The well, maybe fly. they'll make your pedal board. Those are the samples that were brought here. There's not been any of these in the building. Yeah. By the way, yeah. there's not one building here, everybody. There's a few. 50 buildings here. <laughs> um, but maybe you wow. can uh, steal, steal these from Detlef, you that know? That is a very... We need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> He's smiling. Okay. <laughs> Great. So, so, Great but it sounds beautiful. Beautiful. Very touch-sensitive drive. Yeah. That's something I always appreciate about good It doesn't pedals. sound like a drive. It sounds like yeah, an amp song. Exactly. When you exactly. did that double uh, double stop, and yeah. it's got it, this it, throaty tone. And that, that harmonic yeah. popping out. Yeah. Where I was uh, just yeah, staying yeah, on that yeah, tone, yeah. it's like, what is really going on? When you play it, it sounds halfway between a leisure simulator, a chorus, and a flanger. Exactly. Exactly. So, it's, look, Flanders don't have a good reputation because they usually go too much, right? But that thing yeah. is clean as a whistle. Is this because, uh, because the regeneration, of having both? Because the regeneration is oh, not very high, yeah. and then you don't have too much high end added to it. Mm. And then the manual and the depth, I don't have so high. I mean, look, you can make this here. You play. I'm going to make it sound okay. crazy. Okay. okay, just play. <laughs> We 
just go up, 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 up with your string. So it's like a Leslie. It's like a Leslie. <laughs> it's like a Leslie. I think it sounds great. Look, a Leslie is about three feet from the rotor yeah. to the bass speaker, which is three milliseconds. That's flange yeah. range. Yeah, yeah. I, look, flangers are cool. They're just not well understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guitar sounds good plugged in. Sounds like a gypsy jazz guitar. I'm, I'm pretty sure the lav mic will pick that up. Yeah. Did you have a guitar teacher? Where'd you learn? To play? I, I studied music in, in Budapest, in Budapest, where I'm from. Yeah. No, but I, I really appreciate guitars that just have the perfect balance between mojo and character, but also consistency. Oh, that's and that's, um, that's definitely something that um, I've never heard of anyone thinking differently about this part. I'll tell you a weird story. You know, I don't know if I've told this on film before or not. I was in Nashville in a room of about 20 studio guitar players. And they said, Paul, if we don't use our PRS, they erase our tracks. I said, you're out of your mind. <laughs> I said, no, no, they erase our tracks. I said, why? He said, because when they tune the vocal at the end, if it's not in tune with the guitar track, they erase the track. And I, it was the first time I felt so thankful about having the frets in the right place and the nut in the right place. And then obviously that it intonated down here. They they were playing and when they tune the vocal with it within an inch of its life was what they're doing yeah it was in tune with the guitar and if it wasn't they got erased and weren't invited back i thought that was fascinating yeah, yeah. i mean in the studio yeah. I mean, you, you have a, a really impressive studio I I've, I've only have, seen and heard a, some I, things but I, have a studio. I would love to visit that place so what me. what's the one piece of gear you saw in there you coveted uh the, the compressor immediate i mean the 1176 is is i didn't um, have 11 is it is it not I, the, the black a, one no that's a magic death eye that's no a, that that is a, i totally missed that, that now there's a uh, a gentleman in germany that has a company called DDMF, and he does a plug-in version of it, and okay. it sounds fantastic. Okay, it's a basically a Fairchild 660, but made for um, the Capitol Records mastering program. Oh, great! And that's a magic death eye you were looking at. Um, okay, okay. The compressors I have um, are there's four LA2As, and then the magic death eyes. LA2As. Eye. Up, 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 up. Listen to that. It's almost a slap back here. Yeah. Right? That sounds like an old pickup. I like Beautiful. this guitar. Yeah. Maybe you should sell it to me. <laughs> well, it's still here, so now it's not too late. It's not my guitar anymore. It's <laughs> guitar. So thanks it's, for having it. It's yeah. such a pleasure having you in the studio and I, seeing you I, finally I, after so many years. Tw 2018, I think, NAMM show. When the MT15 was released, that's last that time we met fun. in person. Look, we used to bring the band to play at your summer party here. Please. It was so much fun. Please it come. was so much fun. I remember it. I, I heard stories about it. I was not working here. When so Mia happened. came so, here and burned it down. It's one so cool. Day. Some she got, she got in these heels about that high. <laughs> she got down on the floor, not on her knees, but like, and <laughs> sang her for her life. Yeah. And I don't think anybody had done had seen the likes of what she Crazy. she did here. Normally, there's a line to talk to me after we play. Yeah. They didn't want to talk to me. There was only for Mia. She was so mad. <laughs> uh, this was this uh, summer festival, right? Yeah. Toman, Toman Summer Festival, which uh, happened before Corona and all that thing started. And uh, Paul was a uh, guest uh, a couple of times, actually. Yeah, three Not even, times. Three times. And um, those were the last festivals. Since I joined, joined Toman, there were none. So I really well, hope that's going to be a tradition party again. again. It was yeah. a hoot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we would be playing cream tunes, and then there would be oompa bands, and then, you know, <laughs> and it was this and that. I mean, it was just good fun. That sounds I mean, like you, you had no have. idea if it was going to be lederhosen or jeans. <laughs> you just had no idea. <laughs> Those are the best parties. But it was a really good party. We need to and do that by the way, 
Toman employees can put some beer away. Oh, yeah? No. Yeah? I mean, we're in Germany, so, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, it's been an Thank absolute you. pleasture. Thank, Thank you so for much for joining. On. So what's and, the name um, of the show? That's... Toman's Guitars and Basses. Oh, that's it's easy. It's that creative. <laughs> it's that creative. It's that Look, creative. My, the guitar I play is called a Paul's guitar, which is even worse. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for having Cheers, me Cheers, everyone. Thank you.